Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Dawa Ilallah as we look at how we can use comparative sciences to be effective in calling people to submit to Allah. In this series, we've been looking at many different ways that a da'i can improve his skills. We've been speaking how you can speak to someone who perhaps comes from a Christian background about Islam. So we've looked at the doctrines that they believe. We've looked at how you can improve yourself. What do you need to change about yourself to make you a better da'i? And we've also looked at how we can use certain techniques like fundraising, how we can speak to people when we're wanting to build or develop a Dawa organization or a Dawa group within our communities. So we've been very practical. Today, inshallah, we are going to talk about another area that deals with a Dai's character or his personality. And that is how to present a lecture or a talk or how to stand up and speak to a group of people when giving Dawa. Often when we do one-on-one -on -one dawa, it's much easier. But if you're asked to perhaps speak in front of your classroom or to some of the students on campus, or perhaps you as a mother or father are required to come and do a talk to one of the communities in your area about Islam, are you able to do those public speaking engagements effectively? What are some of the don'ts and the do's of public speaking? So we are going to be speaking today, inshallah, about preparing to speak publicly. And some people, when you ask them, would you speak publicly? They get very, very nervous and say, well, I'm not really a public speaker. I don't have the skills that are required to be a public speaker. If you wanted to see what I was like 10 years ago, you would have said, how is this man even on a television channel? How could he even stand up? and speak to a group of people like he does now. It was impossible. Ten years ago, I would have been the last candidate you would have chosen. In fact, probably even six years ago, I'd be the last person you had asked to do any public talk anywhere. I was terrible. The worst of the worst. You know, there's that lecture series that's called The Best of the Best. I was the worst of the worst. And it was through developing communication skills as a da'i, that I learned to become a better communicator. So I'm not there yet. And every single day I have to learn how to connect with people more. So it's not going to happen overnight. So don't beat yourself up and think, well, I don't have the talent, nor did I. I was the worst priest as a Christian. Because I would sit and I'd read my notes and I'd look down like this while I was talking to the congregation. And they all thought I was very humble, but I wasn't humble. I was just stupid. I just didn't know how to speak in public. And so we're going to look, inshallah, at how to be effective so you can get rid of your fears of public speaking. And those of you who are at home that are watching, there is always an opportunity for you to talk publicly. So you must take some of the ideas, inshallah, and apply them to your own life. See how you can use these to become more effective in your dawah. Because there are many different styles of da'wah as we've spoken about. And today we're going to be looking more at public speaking. So how you would stand up perhaps if you had to do a talk in front of a group of sisters or a group of brothers. Or maybe a mixed gathering that you've been invited to talk at. And you're the Muslim representative. And you've been brought to a group of people that are not Muslims. In South Africa, I get invited many times to many different functions. Maybe they've built a new airport and they want to dedicate the airport. And so they invite us to come, or they invite me to come and to do like a prayer or a small talk. So there's a group of atheists and agnostics and Hindus and Buddhists, it's all mixed group. How are you going to use that moment to bring the message of Islam even though you are dedicating a new airport? When they built for the 2010 World Cup for the soccer stadiums, we got invited to the different soccer stadiums to have the dedication ceremonies. How are you going to use that? You can't say, oh, well, I can't talk here because there's boys and girls, men and women. You use that opportunity to speak to the people. Obviously, you're not going to be looking at the sisters when you're doing this. But use these opportunities. How are you going to do it? How are you going to deal with it? Remember we spoke last time about if you're going to be doing fundraising, if you're going to be organizing 
a way to keep your organization sustainable, you're going to be, have to be speaking to people quite often. So even if you get invited to a business, maybe there's the board members that you'd have to address. These skills will help you as well. So inshallah, that is the way of introduction. We're going to be looking at a number of different points as we go through this. It may take a while because we have to explain different concepts. If you have the opportunity to take notes, please do so, even if you're at home. Make sure that you write these points down. Remember when we spoke about good listening skills, the best way to listen is with a pen in your hand. If you have an iPad or you have whatever other electronic device, no problem, but it's better to still use a pen. When the hand moves and makes those letters, the brain remembers it more than pushing buttons. You can still push buttons afterwards. So you can transfer from the written into the electronic. Then your brain will remember it even longer. So let's move straight ahead. Dealing with anxiety is point number one. Many people get anxious when preparing to speak publicly. These ideas and these notes that I'm using come from a series of lectures that have been presented by many universities around the world when they're talking about homiletics, the art of speaking. So these are not original notes. They could just be stated from the beginning. I have followed these formulas for the last six years because I found that it's the best. So it's taken from various universities' notes on how to have the art of speaking, homiletics. The homiletics normally has an association with Christianity. That's why we are not calling it homiletics. We are calling it public speaking. But it's coming from that same idea, the art of speaking. So a priest and a pastor will actually be trained maybe for two years or three years. They'll do this as a subject because it's that important. Because if you don't connect with the group that you're talking to, then what's the point of being a preacher? And that's how they feel. So they spend a lot of time on this. This we've only got maybe three or four episodes to do it in. But we give, so we're giving you the power course. We're giving you the most we can in such a small period of time. So dealing with anxiety is a big issue. There are tricks to the trade. One of the tricks that I have found is that when you get anxious and you're standing in front of a group, say you are now having to stand in front of millions of people all over the world waiting for you to make a mistake, you have to know that there's people like that. Even there might be, if you're talking to 10 people, a lot of them are waiting for you to make a mistake, so afterwards they can come and say, Sheikh, Sheikh, you know, you made this mistake, you made that error, you made that problem. This is a problem. So your anxiety is there because you know this is going to happen. This is what happens in life. How do you deal with anxiety? People have different rituals that they need to do to get over anxiety. You need to come up with your ritual. In fact, we as Muslims have a ritual. We ask Allah to guide us and protect us and to lead us in the straight path. And everything that we do is for the sake of Allah. And this is what we do before we even come out to speak to a group, before we even do a recording. This is what's going on in the minds of the speaker. But when you're standing there and you suddenly go, oh, wow, that's a lot of people. You know, when I did my first public talk as a new Muslim, there were about 30 people, and I was terrified. And if you watch that video, you'll see how terrible it was. I'll try to load it up on YouTube if I have the courage to even let the world see how bad it was. It was terrible. And if you watch that, you think, how could this man even stand up and talk? Why did they even let him stand behind a microphone? But there are skills that you develop over the years as you become more and more confident. So everyone should have some type of ritual. Come up with something that will help break the ice. Something that will help you to connect with the people. So the first time when I saw 30 people, it was like, this is impossible to do. And then I came to the peace conference, and I saw a million people in front of me. And then I realized after that, ah, it's going to be easy from now on. <laughs> Seriously, I'm being honest with you. Because before I came to the Peace Conference 2009, I was nervous when talking in front of people. After I stood in front of a million people, everything became easy. Whether it was 10,000 people or 1,000 people, it was, oh, this is easy. I spoke to a million people. It builds up your confidence when you speak to a larger number of people. Then you don't see a number anymore. Whether you're speaking to one person or a million people, it makes no difference. That confidence will be there, so your anxiety will disappear. So try to build yourself up as the years go by or as the weeks go by or the months go by to larger and larger audiences. Perhaps to maybe volunteer to do introduction for a speaker if you know there's going to be a large gathering. So you get used to 
talking in front of big crowds. If you're at home and this is the first time you're going to be doing a public lecture, perhaps at the mosque or whatever, practice amongst a group of people so you get used to seeing people. Maybe sit some of your family members around. The worst critics that you'll have is your own family. So they're the best ones to do your public speaking in front of. It'll break your anxiety because they'll criticize everything. And that's the hardest audience to get through to. Let's take a break. When we get back from the break, inshallah, we'll continue. Scientific notions in the glorious Quran are among its endless aspects that can testify for the divine nature of this noble book. These scientific notions are probably the best addressed to the people of our time. I am Zaghloul al najjar Please join me in this program to discuss some aspects of the scientific notions in the glorious Quran. Appreciate the word-to-word -word authenticity of scientific notions and proven facts mentioned in the glorious Quran 1400 years ago in Scientific Notions in the Glorious Quran. Every Saturday at 8 p.m. and repeat telecast at 8.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, there is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. He faces... He listens. My question is about the beard. About Imam Mahdi. What are the people believing? He answers. So number one is the help of Allah. He satisfies in the light of glorious Quran and authentic Hadith. If Allah helps you, believe me, you have to get success. Catch Dr. Zakir. <laughs> To get convincing and valid answers in Dial Dr. Zakir, next on Peace TV. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are continuing with looking at public speaking skills, how to develop them. First thing we said was we need to get rid of the anxiety. And perhaps one way to get rid of that anxiety is to practice as much as possible amongst people who will be the most critical. The most critical people you're going to meet are going to be your family. So don't go get friends and people like this. Use your own family. What do you need to change about yourself to make you a better da'i? And we've also looked at how we can use certain techniques like fundraising, how we can speak to people when we are wanting to build or develop a Dawa organization or a Dawa group within our communities. So we've been very practical. Now, when you are going to be doing public speaking, always find out who your audience is going to be. Do not get surprised. Imagine if you are going to do a talk and you prepared your talk, 
and you think you're going to be speaking to 12 year olds and when you get there you find out they're 80 year old retirement village group of people and they're all women and you thought they were going to be kids and men and so you prepared your presentation you prepared your powerpoints you prepared everything for kids so make sure you know who your audience is going to be who will be in the audience what is the etiquette that is going to be required are there going to be any dignitaries that i have to say to our special guests that are here from overseas you must know all that before you even go into the audience and remember that one of the important things when you're doing public speaking is to identify with some of the people already before you go talk so the meet and greet before you do your public lecture some people see them as when they're behind the podium it's not a good idea because you don't know who to connect with there are certain personalities that you will have connected with already before you started and your eyes will be able to move to those different people and you'll make that connection it makes it look more genuine then just looking vaguely from that side and that side it's like playing tennis in slow motion and your eyes are just going because you're robotically being told look there look in the middle look there look there look in the middle and they can see it's not real so if you have the meet and greet in the beginning you'll identify with different people you'll know where to look so it won't just be a robotic movement between left and right that's important it's also extremely important when you are preparing for a public speaking engagement that you choose the topic carefully no matter even if they give you the title of the topic doesn't mean that's the topic that it has to remain except if they're going to go to printing so perhaps you get there and they say to you this is the topic that we have for you you still have two or three weeks inshallah that you can contact them and say your main heading is this and the subheading is going to be this so if they say come and talk to us the importance of sharia that's what they gave you but now you get there and you don't want to do such a broad topic of the sharia you're going to be talking about slaughter yeah so that's, that's what you're going to be dealing with like the simple slaughtering of an animal and what the law is concerning killing an animal and then you're going to bring in how you shouldn't eat pork and all the rest of it and why it's humane you're going to give all the scientific reasons so you can change the topic to make it fit your need so very very important that you look at the topic carefully don't be forced into a broad topic just because they want you to speak on it i got invited to a convention once the whole thing was a disaster from the beginning of the organization till the end of the organization till the point that i refused to even go because they were trying to bully me into a topic and I didn't want to do that topic because it's not an area they have any knowledge of. So you have to be very firm because if you're talking to a mass of people, you don't want to make a fool of yourself and not have knowledge of the topic. So choose a topic wisely. The one organization that I was involved with for a number of years, uh, about two, three years, every time they got me to do a talk, it was exactly the same topic. They never, ever, ever had an imagination to put any other topic up. So if we spoke every second weekend, every second weekend would be exactly the same topic, exactly the same lecture. Now they may have thought it was wonderful, and they might have thought it was great, but I would stand there and go, my name is Arib Islam, I've come to tell you my story. My story starts like this. <laughs> it was like, can't handle doing this anymore. I hated it because they were forcing me to do the same old topic over and over. No one had an imagination in there. So you have to make sure that you stand firm and you choose the topic that you believe in, that you have a passion for. If you're repeating the same topic over and over, it's gonna show. People are gonna eventually see the boredom in your face, the boredom in your expressions, the boredom in the topic. So you must make sure that you choose the topic carefully with wisdom. Another important point to look at when doing it is what will be the setting that the talk will take place in. Will it be like this where it's coming down in a gradient? Will I be above everybody else? Will it be in an open space? Will there be distractions going on behind me? I remember having one talk where I did and there was a Ferris wheel behind me. You know those Ferris wheels that people sit on and they go up and down and everyone screams, ah! That was my backdrop. Do you think I'm going to hold any attention? Everyone, I just see everyone's face going. <laughs> That's what they were doing. Instead of looking at what I was saying, and I'm going, oh, what's the point? I could be saying anything now, and they'd all go. Mm. <laughs> they were just shaking their head, but they're looking at all the entertainment behind you. So what is your setting? Maybe you can't help it, and that's what the setting you've got. Then you're going to have to be very dynamic. 
So you're going to have to speak like this the whole time. <laughs> so you grab people's attention. You can't stand there like, today I want to talk about. That's the Ferris wheel wins. So make sure that you understand where you're going to be positioned. I remember when we came to the peace conference in 2009, we had a tunnels that we had to walk through. And that someone would explain what's going to happen when you walk through a tunnel. That was all fine. So explain the whole story. What you're going to experience. Make sure someone walks you through the scene before you even stand at the podium. We had an economics conference in South Africa recently. And I was one of the speakers. We were talking about business and finance and maths and all that. And it was quite a boring conference for the general people. But one thing they were very, very good at is giving us a walkthrough of everything that we can expect. This is where this bank is going to be sitting. This is where this politician will be sitting. This is where the students from the college will be sitting. This is where they walked us through everything. Before the people got there, we knew who was going to be there, where they're going to be sitting, where the spotlight was going to be, what the cameras were going to be doing, everything. Very, very important that you have an idea. So don't just turn up the day that you're going to talk. You've heard before, I've always said, if you're going to do a talk or go and do a lecture, get there like two or three days before the actual day you have to do a talk. If you've been there before, then it's fine. The day you arrive, the day you can start talking because you're used to the system, you're used to the style. I remember when I did a talk in Ohio, the first time I did it, everything caught me off guard. Nothing was explained properly. One day I had to do a talk at the library, like the local library, and they had this room on the side. And it looked like, you know those movies where you see the president coming in or television program and the president stands and there's that big American logo with an eagle on it and he stands behind there and Mr. President comes. That's how the whole thing was set up. And I have a problem with that. I don't want to stand behind shields and logos and funny things like that, you know, big American flag behind me. That was not acceptable to me. Not that I have any problem with American flags or have any problem with the logo, but not for a Dawa program. I mean, people are going to get the wrong idea. It needs to be blank, no things behind. So you have to be sure of what you're going to be seeing when you get there. So this is very, very important. These are simple things, but important things when doing Dawa. You don't want symbols and objects and things in front of you that you don't want, that will maybe distract from the message or can be interpreted in a negative way. So this is something you need to be aware of. So don't just think of the immediate. Think of what impression am I projecting? You know, sometimes you go to do a talk. In America, they like this sometimes. Like if it's towards Halloween or whatever, they put a big pumpkin in front of where you're talking with some flowers and things like that. We don't believe in that. Can't have pumpkins in front of us, no matter how nice it looks and how earthy it feels. It represents something that is haram. It's like putting Christmas decorations around when you're talking. You can't have that. So we must make sure we understand that. Wherever the setting is, make sure you have the right setting. Next point, good speaking requires good listening. Good speaking requires good listening. We spoke last time, a few weeks back, about good listening skills. And good listening skills means that we have to know how we would listen when someone else is speaking. How well do we listen when somebody else is talking? That's how well people are going to be listening to us. So if we've got bad listening skills and we find we're distracted easily, then we must remember that other people are going to have exactly the same problem. How do we improve that? So we must remember that people have limited listening skills. And that's because we don't make it interesting enough. So we're going to be looking at limited attention span that people have. You cannot talk for three hours unless you're in Africa. In Africa, if you come and do a talk and it's 25 minutes, they're going to want their money back. 25 minutes, what's wrong with you people? We want three hours. So the lecturers will speak for three hours with non-stop. No breaks, no coffee breaks, no tea breaks. Three-hour lecture, keep going. If it's less than three hours, they're not happy. Other countries are not like that. 25 minutes is already the maximum. So you need to understand what are the attention spans of the people you're speaking to. If you come to Africa, don't give a 25-minute talk. They are not going to be amused. Three hours minimum, serious. So go to America and you give a three-hour talk, no one will be there. They'll all walk out halfway through. So you have to know. We've run out of time again. So if you want to join us again next week to learn more about speaking skills and how you can improve them, make sure you join us here, same place. So for me, Arif Islam, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
مشفق متعطف لا ينتهي بالحصر ما أعطاه آه رب الرحيم مشفق متعطف The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu anfiqu mimma razaqnaakum min qabli an ya'tiya yawmul la bay'un fihi wa la khullatu wa la shafa'a. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B151 TH. Pound account number 0113201. IBAN GB49ARAY 3000830113201. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV. The